Please open your Bibles to Ruth chapter 1 and I request everyone to please rise up. Ruth chapter 1. I will read verses 1 to now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab he and his wife and his two sons and the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons Malon and Chilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came to the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Verse 22. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabite, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Karun na buntag, akong ishare sa inyo ha ang mensahe na ang title God Aligns. Doon na lang po yung nasuki na, na masinsyaw. Na ilang din na pang repair na itong mga alloy na, na parts. Tungod kay, katong motor na ito sa una, na bunggo ito siya sa first na owner. O na, na, na nahiwi ang iyahang, iyahang yantas. O daga na suggest nga na daw usa ka tigulang na nga gamay na mong siya pero maayo siya po align. Nga dili man gyud mabalik sa original ang iyang shape pero maayo gid siya mo align. And this morning in the light of Ruth chapter 1 we will see and study about God's aligning activities in the lives of his special people. Keep sa mga mga special people. If you consider yourself as a as a child of God, then you are a special one. God's alignments or God's aligning activity. I I I like I love the phrase in Psalm 37, verse. Uh, 24 Ingon dito sa 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 Psalms The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways Though he fall though he fall he shall not utterly cast down Kung sa isulti sa last ng praise verse for the Lord upholded him with his hand. The picture was na na stumble ka and then na barag ka, na sukarap ka, na murag, you're, you're moving, na lain mong kastar sa, lain di na katindog, gaan na kapadulong ka sa pagka, pagkatupa sa kamabangga dito. And then, kung sa kurong sa ginoo, God upholded him with his hand. 
the position, the the situation, the case. I am about to 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 fall down, literally, because I was stumbled. But God's hand upholded me in His hands. God's alignment or God's holding up hands. Ang ginoo na na siya plano dahan para sa imong sa akong kinabuhi. Everything about you, everything about me was already in place. Sa lugar man, sa oras, sa degree, kung nung saman, sa measure, all about me was already done. Ang ginoo nga, God's master plan. Na alito ang imong kinabuhi, na alito akong kinabuhi. And before the foundation of the world, they are finished. Humana. Dili progressive ang plano sa ginoo sa atong kinabuhi. Everything was already done. And I want to tell this, I want to, I want to, to mention this, that whatever God has planned for you and for me, they are perfect. And they are beautiful, they are wonderful. He knew and had foreknown all things. God had, through His unlimited wisdom, has already set and orders things through His sovereign plans and power. But listen to this, Christians. But by reason of our rebellion and deliberate disobedience, I want us to think about these two, two words. Rebellion, you know, three words, two offenses. Rebellion and deliberate disobedience. When we say deliberate disobedience, the picture is like this. During Osaka town, Osaka citizen, that nakabalo siya kung saan mga, mga balaod ato nga, ato nga community. Pero, bisan pa man sa iyang pagkahibalo sa mga balaod atong community, bisan pa man sa kahibalo na nakabalo siya sa mga, mga dili dapat buhaton atong ang community, he still disobey. And that is deliberate disobedience. That even we knew, we still do it. And that is one thing that should be, should, we should be afraid of. Duha daw kahinunggan ang kalainan daw sa sa sala ni Satan o sa sala ni Adam was this. Tungon kito na ekwasyon nga naman nga sa demnat na hulog ng tao God promised a Savior. The fall happened sa Genesis chapter 3 and the same chapter God promised a Savior. Pero sa panahon nga ang angels, Satan had fallen Mula maging nag-promise ng ilong salvation para sa ila. Why? You know why? This is the reason. Adam's offense was against God's ordinances. Mga sugo sa ginoo. Commandments. But Satan's offense was a direct offense against God's character. What was that? Remember his five wills, I wills, that was about his pride. Now, by reason of our rebellion and deliberate disobedience, God must be or must do something like aligning. Ili-align niya. Murag dunay mga adjustments na buhaton sa ginoo sa akong kinabuhi o sa imong kinabuhi. In this particular verses, we can see Ruth chapter 1, verse 3, 9 to 11 to 19. We can see God, God aligning something in the lives of Elimelech, Elimelech, in the life of Naomi, in the life of Malon and Chilion, and even in the life of Ruth. We don't like changes. Kisay gusto ka lang kausapan. Ba? Lain, lisod. 
change of residence, change of acquaintances, change of work. Why? Because we love comfort zones where we are at peace with everyone, where we are convenient and sustained. We love to remain with the people we are used to be. But you know what? Sometimes, Christians, if we are sensitive, have you noticed that something is... is we, we can prevent something is changing. Naagiga kausap. Whether we like it or not, Magabato, magabantay na lang tanga ang usa kabutang na usab na siya. Some place must be left. Sa kalugar dapat biyaan o mabiyaan. People or acquaintances were were gone. Strange things are coming in view. Makita niyo mga bago ng mga butang. Whether we like it or not, changes are must. And God might use things, people, situations. He might use necessities, even our failures, to move us. It moved us from one place to another place. And I believe there is one way of God's aligning activity sa atong kinabuhi. God aligns. Ginas, gina, ayaw, ginaplastar niya ang mga butang sa atong kinabuhi. I call them God's movers. It could be someone or something. But God uses people or things to move us. They are God's movers for us to be properly in place. And then God will continue working out His plan, His wonderful plans for us. But He must do the aligning. The align ka sa gino. These things would leave us no choice but yield unto. Mutugyan ta sa mga sa mga aligning sa gino. Why there are changes? There are three reasons. Because someone is working out the best for our lives. And that is God. Because God is working out for our best. Changes are possible and along our way, we, we will experience changes. Second, not only because someone is working out for our best, it's because someone has greater and best plans for each one of us. Yun, ang unang-una na kasi kung kagulingon, ang kaninginong mga ginapang plano, ginapang tasta din mo sa, sa future, mura, the best na gitsya para sa imuha. Are you sure? I'm not sure. But one thing I'm sure, God has a best plan for me. Muna'y pinakasiguro. Ikatulong na reason why there are changes. Not only that God is working out the best for our lives, not only because someone is, has greater and best plans for, for me and for you, Third, because there are times we are lost from His ways. There are times that we are lost from God's ways. That we make detours. That we follow our own ways. Ingun pa sa Osaka author. This happened when we, 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 when we follow our seemingly quote-unquote right ways. Magunang-una na ka nasakto ni siya yung pa sa 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 making Solomon. There is a way which seemeth murag. Seemeth good and to a man but the end thereof is destruction. And God must align Iusap sa gino ang direction sa atong kinabuhi for us not to be totally destroyed. God will do the aligning for us to be spared from, from getting hurt. God will align something in our lives for us to, to live His plan para may kinabuhi na ito ang plano niya sa atong kinabuhi. Ruth chapter 1 
let us see the, the sequence and I, I like this this chronological view has a uh, chapter one Boaz must redeem Ruth why so that Obed would be born why Obed should be born so that Jesse would be born and why Jesse should be born so that David would be born and why David should be born nga nung dapat matao si David so that Nathan his son should be born From Nathan, then there was this process. Even the history, 500 silent years that God was very or so silent. Then came Matthew, Luke, Joseph, and Mary. Then finally, Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Savior. So Boaz must redeem Ruth so that Jesus the Savior will come. Did you see the must, the must, ang, ang pagka, pagka importante sa, sa event, sa kinabuhi ni Ruth, sa kinabuhi ni Naomi. And that is why I'd like to share to you how God aligns the life of Naomi. Para lang na mahitabu ang pinakadako ng plano sa ginuo sa history sa mankind. Ang kaluwasan. How the Lord could do that? Mogi na siya diskutan sa chapter 1 sa Ruth. Verse 1. Please look at your Bible. It came to pass that judges rose the land and there was famine in the land. There was shortage of food by reason of invasion or wars. Tungon kay ato ang panahon, gumok ayusa sa Bethlehem, Judah. Here is a lady, a good husband, a good father. Na ay daghan ng mga idea, messages na ilang ikuha sa chapter 1 sa Ruth na, na lain ang line of thought or ang ilang perspective. And I chose this, I chose this uh, line of thought na i-share sa inyo ka ron. And I hope na di ka ma ma-confuse sa ubang ng mga, mga thoughts. This is exactly the event included in the first chapter of Ruth. Judges ruled Bethlehem, Judah, and there was famine in the land, so it's a food. And literally, good husband, good father, good provider, for the safety and survival of his household, must go to other place. Dapat siya mubalhin sa laing lugar. Some believe that their properties were already sold, the na or maybe or possibly mortgaged, and that makes their living difficult dito sa Bethlehem. So wala sa choice, move sila. But mind you, it was God's first mover. Verse 2. They came into the country of Moab. By the way, why Moab? If Elimelech was, was, was looking for, for food, there are many neighboring tribes. Na ay daghan sila mga palimpi sa palibot. Pero nga naman na si Elimelech with Naomi and his two sons, wala man man to sila mga palimpi. Rather, ni ato sila sa Moa, which is a country nga usa sa mga resulta sa kadaupan sa mga tao. Remember no kay La, kung sa iyan duha ka mga babae, nga anak. They came into the country of Moab to sojourn there, but was about to settle for some time. Ulam, mintas, mintas, gubok ito, uh, lisod ang kinabuhi, matos ito sa, sa Moab, mag, mag, dito ta mga hinabuhian. Why? Why do you think? Because this, there is only 
one root. And that one root leaves at Moa. Isa lang. Noong nang kanang mga asawa, no? Wala dito yung kapareho. Kamog yun ang dihatag sa mga bana. Sa kadagan sa lugar, sa kadagan sa palikot, kamog yun! Why? Because there's only one root. And that root lives at Moa. And therefore, Elemelik, Naomi, and his two sons must go to Moa. How or why? To fetch Ruth. Para kuhaon si Ruth dito. And how God will do that? We'll continue. For Naomi and Elemelik, at Tush na sumangwag, because of the famine, because they had heard that there was plenty in the land of Moab. Bugana dito, wala yung krisis dito. So what does it dito? They will leave the place he called House of Bread, that is Bethlehem, and will go to some other place known Moab. Tungan kay doon, doon ay scarcity of food, gutom sa Bethlehem, o bugana dito sa Moab. Masih malu masih mau apa aku masuti anyway bukan lagi tukar mau nak ada mana yang bukan nak bukan nak kain tubik flowing verse three elderly died look at your Bible when her husband died the fear of the cut off of the name Sa una mga mga Kristuhan, pag doon ay mamatay ng lalaki, delikado na din ang paayo na naman makuhaan na ang, 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 ang probability sa ilang pagdaghan, pagkayap sa ilang mga apelyedo. But in the case of Naomi, when her husband died, the fear of the cut-off of names was not a big issue for she still had two sons, Malon and Chilion. But Malon and Chilion, kinahanglan sila nga magsuroy na sila dito sa Moab, sa Moab. Kinahanglan nga magsuroy na sila or makakita na sila o partner as soon as they are well. Why? Because these two children or sons of Naomi are weak children. Mga masakitun. The name Malon means illness or sickly. And the name Chilion means consumption. Or, kung sa gisuti sa pulong sa ginoo, these children are actually expected to live but a short period of time. Kaya ba mga tao, mga bata, bang tagalan ang kinabuhi? And it was true. They took wives. Malon met Ruth, and they get married. Chilion met Orpah, and they get married. And look at this. After some time, they are now minyak nasila. And finally, Ruth na lent na siya sa pamilya ni Naomi. At di na to biyaan na ang katong sequence of events sa chronological na na viewpoint ng ano ni Atus Lagmoa, who is Ruth, who is Boaz, das and das. At itong nanduman pa ni. Let's connect our our study on that on that picture. Na ano si Ruth na minyo na kay Malon? Point na siya mo ulit sa Bethlehem. Pero dili pa, wala sila ng puyo. Gani ko ng pulong sa ginoo. Ha? Verse 4. They took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. 
that's no longer di na siya makonsider na sojourning di na na makonsider na na adtulang nagreside na sila nagpuyo na sila they were already settled and kung sali kami kontento na sila dito so what about God's plan? what about Boaz? what about Ruth? nakalimot na sila hindi mo sa ginoo again Naomi must be moved. Something must be aligned. Malon and Chilion died. Kung wala nang kadungog si Naomi nga naangay pagkaon sa Bethlehem, she would not think of going home. O ba nga mga nagtuon sa aning libro ingon nila it is probably that element now me naka naka acquire na sila property sa Moab which is enough for their living but God aligns God must do something for Naomi to move back to Bethlehem through the death of his two children, Naomi now would think na muulit na siya doon. Kinsa pa may atpuyan niya dito sa Moab. The death of Naomi's two sons and the news they had heard that God was blessing Bethlehem with food moved Naomi to go home for good and of course with Ruth which means soon later Boaz and Ruth will finally meet. Ah, what a love story! Nakita niyo ang love story? Nakita niyo how God plays things, how God orders things for the great, for, for the great purpose para sa kaluwasan sa talang ng kalibutan, sa talang ng mga tao sa kalibutan. Ruth is now preparing with Naomi pa ulit sa Bethlehem. What an exciting! meeting to ma-meet na ni Ruth ang iyahang kinsman redeemer iyahang lifetime partner mga mga young people ang iyong pagkalit-alit that seemingly right person don't believe that listen to God's instructions and tribulation mailhan ang ilalim mo siya and God must do, as I have said, must God, God must do that aligning activities. To kinaanta sa mga dalang nga, we are going our own ways, and God must stop us before we will we will arrive to that place called destruction. It is a terrible thing to live a life outside the will of God. Amen. Nipay pa kita karon kay nindo pa yung kahintang. That is a deception. Because a relationship that God is not pleased with is not a happy relationship. It's not a happy relationship. Alignment. God needs to align something at this point of time. You know what? Sa dinang nag-prepare na sila in 6 to 9, verses 6 to 9, si Orpa nag-prepare na po siya mga gamit, si Ruth. Excited to sila, di ba? Well, motto sila sa Bethlehem. Impaki sila. Baktasan sila, nagbiyahin na sila after some time dito sa dalang ato dapit. Mugawas na sila sa boundary sa Moab and then musulod na sila sa, sa lugar, territory sa Judah, Bethlehem, Judah. Something came to the mind of Naomi. Siguro na po na muna siya. Ano sa kung may buhato na yung mga bayhana dito? Nung wala naman ko'y anak, yung pwede nila pang panahon. Huwag na ilang culture sa una. Ha? So, ingo ni Naomi, go back to your families. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. 
And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return to, return each to her mother's house. The Lord dealt kindly with you as ye have dealt with them and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Naomi now is doing something against the will of God, against the plan of God. Why? Iyang ipapauli si Orf of si Ruth. God must do something in the heart of Ruth. Kinsay na resist sa decision ni Naomi. Ruth. Why not Orpah? Because Orpa is not Ruth. Si Ruth lang man ang iridim ni Buas. Did you see how God was, how specific God was? Inalagin ka specific ang ginoo. And we need His wisdom and understand His working for us to be right and be in tune with God's provisionary work. Mga lisod kayo mga kristohanong na magpadali-dali ta sa itong mga gusto. When we are driven with our emotion, when we are driven with our pride, when we are driven with that seemingly right ways. Anyway, praise God for His mercy. Praise God for His grace. God will see us through along our way and stop to us. Makunong ta si Gino. And that is His sparing activity to save us from the worst. Or for that, but Ruth insisted. And it seemed to be that Naomi has no choice but to bring her home. But that's a good sila. How many times you have read this chapter or this book? It is a very exciting and amazing love story that God used to serve His greater purpose. Dito mo, kami ito sa ito ito mga love stories para ma-serve ang iyang purpose. Did you realize that? Did you see that in this account? Kami ito sa ito ang ito mga love stories according to His ways and according to His will so that His greater purpose for everyone will be served. God's way or man, means of aligning roots. Ruta. You know what, Christians, sometimes or most of the time, it hurts us. It is hurting, disappointing, frustrating, painful, dream blown, blowing. Kala mga aligning sa ginoo, they seem to be a dream blowing act of God. Murang nagugba ay mong tango sa kinabuhi. But that is not true. God is only aligning our lives for us to be in tune and once again be put again to His truck sa dalang sa ginoo. Go through para sa pag-fulfill sa iyong plano for me and for the lives of many. We have seen the aligning work of God in the life of Naomi. In the summary, why we call it frustrating, disappointing, hurting, dream blowing, blowing? Because he said, she said, verses 19, So they went, they too went until they came to Bethlehem and came to pass when they were come to the, to the city, all, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? She was changed. Ang iyang appearance was actually changed. Did we know in verse 20? So, hey, hey, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. Call me not Pleasant. Instead, call me Peter. Inala ka na po ang disappointments. Para sa unahon ay Naomi. What had happened at Moab was actually a dream-blowing event sa iyang kinabuhi. But she didn't realize who she brought to Bethlehem. 
Wala sila kuna wala kinsin ibala niya sa Bethlehem. The grand, grand, grandmother of David. Pirmi na ito na si Madungan ng Kristo Hanun. Yes. She never realized what God's plan have carried out, had carried out through her experience. You're hurt? You're disappointed? Huh? You're angry with God, baby? Asking Him why? Hey, listen to this. Naomi did not realize what of God's plan had, had happened, was, was, was carried out through His experience. Wala sila kabalo, wala sila kabalas, but later on sa iyang tinabuhi. Her name was restored to her. Pleasantness again shines in her life. Na bloom utro si Naomi. Sa kalipay niya, na si Ruth, karoon ibinyuan ni Boaz, was redeemed by Boaz. Ang apelyedo si Anbana, magpadayon. Tungkol kay ang anak ni Boaz o ni, ni, ni Ruth, makonsider siyang panahon na anak ni Malon. You see that? Kung sa'yo nang din makunamuna at nakistuhan ng bangaway, maayang na itabu sa ating mga pag-antos. But if God is that is there aligning our lives, there, there will be something na agay maayang na butang ng mahitabo. And first good thing is that we are spared. Amen. Wala talag na lang sa sa pagkagubag yun. And the second thing is that after God has revealed His plan, makaimong tagin mo, salamat kayo mo. Kibisan sa ako mga sayot, magihi mo, you have accomplished one of your plans. And thank you so much, Lord. By the way, the relationship of of now of Ruth and Malon does not justify a relationship between a a believer and unbeliever. Huh? Was it mo ay pwede na dito? No, hindi na siya. It it it's not taught in this account because the love story here is not about Malon and Ruth. The love story that God has, well, was pleased is the love story about Ruth and Boaz. God, though He will be heard, bisan masakit ang ginoo, He will allow us to be heard. He will allow us to be in pain. He will allow us to experience brokenness. Though God's heart too will be broken because He loves us so much. But for one reason, God wants to align our lives. Monasya, whatever that takes, God must do the aligning. Tapat yung himuon sa ginoon, mga aligning. Mga pag-adjust sa atong kinabuhi. Why God cares for, for the greater good for us and God cares for His greater plans for us. That's is terrible. Hard way. Devastating. Difficult. But Christians, if we will only submit to His aligning activity, let us just give our will and our feeling to God's aligning activity and be humble to admit to admit we are wrong and repent and the aligning will be easier and gently gentle Lord align me itugyo na ako kung kabaligo and that would make the aligning activity of God easier and gentle but you know what, Christian? Magpagay-gahay ka sa kasing-kasing and still insist and continue with our seemingly right ways. Even if we knew that we are having or keeping things that is not pleasing before the Lord, God's aligning activity would be painful and hurting. Why? Try to get a stick, an uncurved stick, 
You want that strength? Break it. And sometimes God will break us for us to be straightened. God must do the breaking for us not to stay cut. And that is so hurting. That is very painful. We will, add, we will end up destroyed if we will not surrender to God and submit to His aligning activity. Who said that? There is a way which seemeth good unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. The wisest man ever during his days. King Solomon. Mas maalam pa ka King Solomon? I don't think so. But he said, that is wrong. Christians, it can be illness. The Lord will use to frustrate our pursuits that are not aligned with His plans. God will use illnesses. God will use weaknesses. It can be a failure or mistakes that the Lord will use to correct our stubbornness and arrogance. Kami itong sa ginoong mga kamalian, itong mga kapalpakan na ito, para nga, para nga ikulit sa ginoong itong pagkagahi o ulo, ang itong pagka-independent. Katong yun na, deliberate disobedience, ah, that directly hit the heart of God. When God says no, then we, 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 we deliberately say, I will do this. Do you think God is okay? No, God is not okay. Ayun, sahay. Murag okay lang na. Murag walay na itabu. Mind you, God, along your way, will see you. Will rebuke you. Will correct you. And will break you. Why? Because God wants us to be aligned. God wants us to be fine. Not only illness, not only failure or mistakes, it can be a loss of loved ones. This is terrible. That God must took some of our loved ones just for us to be aligned. Why we are that hard? Yung po sa picture. It took Joab his barley fields para natubangon niya si Absalom. <laughs> and sometimes, God will took sometimes somebody just to take our attention. Kuha mo nang sa ginawa natin attention. Para mahumok ka. Ngayon tayo na sa mga tabo. Loss of loved ones. Loss of John! Okay, ito, di ka mahantok sa mga gihimo ni mong sa kabalong na di ka lang ginoon. Anyway, you have your job. God can anytime to be your job. I tell you. Loss of properties or fame the Lord will use to confront us of our pride and arrogance. Christians, it's terrible. Katrukan. Pero kinalang buha ito sa ginoo kung magpagahit kahit ka sa iyang tubangan. Yes, God is a God of chances. But He is holy. He must impose His judgment or justice. The Lord will do keep us aligned with His best plans whatever it takes. Kasi kung sa'yo may tabo, buha itong sa ginoo para lang na ma-align ka sa iyang plan. I want to read this in Romans chapter 12 with this uh, uh, translation. Please open your Bible, Romans chapter 12 verse 2. But I will start reading from verse 1. Apostle Paul was, was talking to the Roman Christians. I urge you, brethren, I beg you, please, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship service. Verse 2. You 
are not to be likened in behavior to this world. Dili mo dapat magpaliho sa mga kinaiya, sa mga tao na liya sa kalibot, sa palibot. But be ye transformed or be ye kept on changing. That is our progressive sanctification that day after another we are changing to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Kanusa ng subod kating na changes. These changes began when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Second Corinthians 5.17, if I'm right. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. As I'm changes with all things, of God. Behold, new things are become new, and all things are of God. Are you changing? Are we changing? Are we evolving? Nagausab, nagausab, nagto sa pagkatahong ni Kristo. Keep on changing and make new in mind. And by the renewing of your minds, Why? Nga nung kinahalan ta nga mag-change, mag-improve, mag, mag mag-dindot pa ganyan yung Kristuhanon. Listen to these questions. So that you may be able to determine what God's will is. Unsang mag-usap sa ato? The Bible will change us. I mean, God will do the changes, but God will use His words to tell us, do not do this, do not do that, do this and do that. The Bible! And we keep on changing by His word through the working of the Holy Spirit. And when we, in our mind, we are full with God's word, we will know, we will be able to determine what the will of God. And sad to say, that even in point of time sa itong kinabuhi, that we are able and have known the will of God, we still deliberately do things our own ways. Ato, yan kung isunod atong mga kaugalingon, bisag na kabalunan ta sa kamaturan. And that is a terrible thing. David says, it is a dreadful thing to fall in the hand of God. Are you not afraid to fall on the hand of God? So that you may be able to determine what God's will is, that you may be able to determine what is right from wrong, that you may be able to determine what is proper from improper, that you may be able to determine what is pleasing and complete before the Lord. That is the purpose. Why? We must change for the better. That is the reason why we need the Word of God because we must change. We must grow. We must improve. Do you love your Bible? Do you read your Bible? Do you know your Bible? Do you memorize the books in your Bible? We should know His Word. Because by knowing His Word, we will know Him, and we will know His will. It is that serious, in another serious among the Christians, that we must be conscious enough, discerning enough, serious enough, to know and understand the will of God, to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guidance and revelations. In another so important thing. Don't play with God. We seem to be playing with God when we knew His commandments and still doing it. Or disobey him. Are we playing with God? What about our respect to Him? Na nung sayang nagipaghimo sa mga butang na klaro kayo yun sa gino, do not do this! Why is it so easy for us to do that? How about our respect to Him? Our reverence to Him? You know, Christians, many times you're acting like disrespecting our God. Nakabalutan ka that God sees all things. Even in our minds and in our hearts, God knew all things. We can't hide anything from Him. Do you really respect Him? Yeah. 
We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guidance and revelations. And when we do, by the grace of God, let's obey Him. By the grace of God, by the strength that God promised to give us, let's obey Him. Let's stop our ways that is seemingly right. Let's follow God's ways. Why? God's ways are perfect. Why prefer our ways? Yan di man sigurado ang itong mga pangamang mga dalan. Pero ang dalan sa ginawa sigurado ang kayo. Ngayon katuwa ang itong sundon mga Kristuhan. Let's obey Him! Let's obey God! Let's repent! Please! If until now we are keeping and doing things that we knew that God is not happy with, let's stop it and repent! If you respect God, if you love God, repent and, res and, and show Him respect. Because we can play Him. He is a powerful God. He is a dreadful God. He can destroy us anytime. He can break us. If you people have realized something, kung nakakay na-realize something sa mong kinabuhi, pinapanghimog ni mo that is you are sure not right with God, ask Him to align you. Lord, I give you myself, I give you my heart, my mind, please align me. I am keeping these things for a long time, please align me. Lord, by your mercy and grace, please put me back to your child again and make me a vessel. Suglanan, butanganan, gamitunan sa ginoo. We cannot play with God. If God is that serious, kung iyan ang kaseryoso ang ginuho sa pagdil sa itong kinabuhi, we should or we must be that serious too. Why? Do you remember before I preached the prayer meeting? We exist not for ourselves. We exist for Him. And therefore, keep ourselves pleasing to the Lord. Wala may pulos itong kinabuhi. Nagbuhi pa tayo kung ibang malipay ang ginuho. Wala pa may pulos yung kinabuhi. Why? Because the reason we still breathing is because of His grace and He sustained us with His grace because something God wants to accomplish through our lives. And what are we doing? Nag-operate pa ka sa ginoo, mga Kristuhanon, so that His purpose would be served. At the end of the day, we would say, Lord, thank you for something like Naomi. She is not, she is not, Conscious. Nga sa iyan mga pains and hurts, disappointments sa mua, sa mua, something or great thing had accomplished. Ruth meets who was. But if you will meet again, God does the aligning. Nagtuwag yung Kristuhan mo. Nga doon ang ginagawa ng plano ang kinabuhay, ang ginawa sa inyong kinabuhay. Sa atong kinabuhay ka na. Huwag makomplis lang na if we are in line with His will and plan. Makomplis lang siya, though sometimes we, we, we do detours, God will do His aligning work for us to be on track again. Praise be to the Lord. Lord, salamat kayo nung no, ibubong lipat niyo. Sa ato, masagot ang badlongon. Ayun ka, sumaw pag badlongon ka. Nagbasa na sa Bible, di badlong ka sa pulong sa ginoon, ang adungo ka sa wala sa badlong ka. Be thankful to Him. Why? God wants you to be in Him again. Or God wants to, to, to correct us. So don't be angry. Be thankful. Be thankful. When we feel God stops, He does not harden our hearts. Ipabati ka na sa ginuubang na pulong na. Ipabati ka na sa ginuubang na ayaw na. Hindi na ito pag-ayaw itong kasing-kasing. Let's submit to His ways and will. Here are dangerous scenarios ng Kristuhanon before we go to our conclusion. When it is a dangerous thing, when we get used living contrary 
for unpleasant before the Lord. Ano ko lang naanap na pito ang kinabuhi na against ito ang buto ng plano si Ginoo? Naanap na itong kinabuhi na supak sa pulong sa Ginoo na imong nahibawaan? That is a dangerous thing! It's a dangerous thing when you get used of doing things you knew God is not happy with. That is a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing when you remain and insist on doing or keeping things which you already knew wrong and sinful in the eyes of God. And it's a very dangerous thing when your heart gets calloused or seared. Have you encounter these words kanang di ko bala na bitaw ang atong kasing-kasing nga di na tama konsensya sa sala nga buhat ko na to di na epektibo ang pensikulo nga nagsulti sa sugo sa ginoo di na may pikto sa kasing-kasing our hearts were already callous Lord please help us no katawa lang nato ang sugo sa ginoo katawa lang itong mga reminders sa ginoo that easy we take God lightly Lang. You know what? We can play God. It's always remember that. It's a deception. It's a lie to think that God is is faithful to you even though you are doing bad things. Mayroon nang diyan ng binaw sa ako. Bisa ginali akong kinabais ko pangalaga. Bisa ginali akong kinabais. No! You are only sustained by God's grace because God is gracious. You are only sustained by His mercy because His mercy is everlasting. But I want to tell you, Christians, God will see you through. God will see you through. Mating istorya ni Gandino sa inuwa along the way. And I hope that would not be painful. Di yung kanasya sa akin. God had already ordered His plan for us. That master master plan is perfectly beautiful and wonderful. Oh, if we can just imagine, ang plano sa ginoo nga ingon niya perfect and wonderful. To live life abundantly, to live life peacefully, to live life joyfully. God is always with us. Listen to these questions. God is always with us through our ways. Na doban ng ginoo sa tuwa mga dina agianan. And every time we compromise His will, He will do align us and bring us back to the right track. And that is how gracious God is. That's how patient our God is. Only submit and obey Him. Bula mo itong bato. Pagtugyan lang sa ginoo, pagsunod sa ginoo. And of course, repent. Know Him. Know His will and follow what you have known. That woman saw that woman and asked, Lord, buha ito yung mga bawal, mga sagabal sa akong pagkalagad sa iyo mga. Ang bawang sagabal sa iyo kinabuhi na yung kayang iyang anak na lalaki. So God took His Son. And she gets angry with God. Why God took His Son? She prayed. My point is, God is so serious. And when His will is compromised, He will do the alignment or the aligning. What we have known about Him by His grace, you know, kanina, let's obey Him. Obey His instructions as the Lord gives you knowledge and understanding. Raise, raise, raise a life or live a life that, that explains the truth. When we understand and realize something that is not wrong, that is not right, let's correct it ourselves using the Word of God. Christians, is there something in you? Be honest to yourself. Don't live, don't be deceived that this, everything is okay with you. Be honest with yourselves and be honest before the Lord. If something is not right in you, if something is not right in me or with me, let's deal it with God. <clears throat> in your life, is your life needs an alignment? Ask the Lord to do it. 
and submit to His will and cooperate with His to do it.